everybody. I'm Sally Englehart, Grand Prix dressage rider. Today's tip is achieving an effective seat. Have you ever been frustrated that you don't have a good connection with your horse? Do you ever get worried that you don't feel very secure in the saddle? Well, this tip could be for you. The first thing to think about when you want an effective seat is the contact you've got with the saddle. That contact comes from the seat bones. So you've got your two seat bones sitting in the saddle. You want to make sure that they're even, that the body weight in each one is the same. You don't want to be too loaded up on the left or on the right. So make sure that the body weight is even and that you've got that balance. Uh, make sure that your balance is also, uh, you're in the middle of the balance from front to back. You want to be able to um, keep your center of gravity uh, in, on the horse, you want to be able to keep your centre of gravity with the horse. The next thing to think about uh, from the seat is your back. And really to talk about the seat, you can't avoid using the back, you can't avoid talking about the back. So your back should, it should be nice and straight. Imagine the pelvis as a bowl. Coming out of the back at the centre is your spine. You want to imagine your vertebra sitting on top of each other really straight. And of course, you'll use the core to do that. And when you use the core, think about taking the belly button back to the spine. And you can also add a bit of waist. Take your, the muscles here at the side, you, they can join in as well. If you, if you think that you need more than belly button back to the spine, take your belly button back and then lift it up. And that gives you a really, really powerful, um, that gives you a really good source of power for you to be able to keep your seat um, and keep your security. The next thing to think about is the legs. You want to make sure that the legs are hanging out of the hips evenly. Most bodies are a little bit sideways and you might find that you sleep a little bit sideways. Uh, so when you get on the horse, let your, you can even look down and have a, and check. Make sure that your knees are um, even against the saddle. Make sure that your thighs are dropped and that the femur is hanging out of your pelvis. Think about the ball of the hip. Uh, you want that to gently rock in the socket as you walk. So you want your legs to be nice and heavy. Imagine gravity is tugging at your feet, pulling your feet gently down towards the ground. Um, so if you can keep all of those, you've got a really good base to start with. Um, from there, you can then use the pelvis for the aids. You can tip the pelvis forward slightly for the upwards aids, and you can use, you can immobilize your pelvis for the downwards aids, downward aids. When you do the tip forward, be careful not to collapse the front body. Uh, if you imagine there's a bubble on top of your horse's neck, you don't want to squash the bubble down so that it bulges out of the sides. You want to imagine pressing up against that bubble. Imagine pressing the bubble a little bit towards the horse's ears. And that's how you get the tip forward for your upwards aids. Uh, when you want to use the downwards aids, downward aids, you will immobilize your back using the core muscles, immobilize the back and the pelvis so that your seat bones set just a little bit against the saddle. The horse will feel that um, and the uh, response that you want is a downward aid. So you don't have to pull on the mouth um, at all. We don't really want that. Um, the other thing to, the other things to consider um, is that you want to avoid too much of the fleshy part of your bum touching the back of the saddle. So you don't want, you know, you don't want your coccyx bone uh, holding any of your body, uh, any of your body weight. You want to make sure that your coccyx bone is near the saddle, but not uh, holding any weight. And you want to make sure that you're not too far forward. Um, on your soft fleshy parts. You want to be really upright and tall. The other thing that you want to avoid is getting left behind. Uh, you want to keep this posture and expect that posture to go with the horse 
when uh, he takes the upward aids. So, if you uh, take all of this information and um, use it in your riding, you should have an effective seat that forms a really secure base from which you can have, have a great ride. Thanks everyone and I'll see you next time.